as in terms of prey in prison, well, here's a story where I was a straight up predator. And it's the only time I ever did this. But anyway, so I'm in Vacaville. I've just come back from escape. And I'm walking out of the, the building. And I'm with Doug Orr, that Hells Angeles. Oh, about. yeah, Doug. Doug, and, I'm, and there's an Indian kid and somebody from my county, about five people around him. And he's like, he's the man, you know? Do you know how in the old days um, there'd be some famous warrior who'd earned his bones and he was the man? And the young men would want to be around him because they wanted to be like him and learn from him and, you know, that kind of thing. Like Uhtred in the last kingdom. Yeah, that's, and so that's how, it, that's how it works. And he was the man. And so, we walk out to the yard and he pats his pockets and he says, I don't have any smokes. Anybody got any smokes? And nobody had any smokes. So I said, we'll take care of it. So I started, walked out onto the savannah, right? And this Indian kid, now I didn't even know his name. I didn't know anything about him. He just, just automatically joined me like the second hyena. <coughs> and we walked out on the plane and I just cast my eyes, just like one of those nature shows, just looking at the other animals for anything, for a sign, for some sign. And there were like all these kids, guys dressed in their prison greens, sitting, you know, here and there on the grass. And as I walked past this one group, I saw a flash of red as this guy, he just the corner of his Marlboro carton, he was hiding under his coat. And that was the signal. That was that sign of weakness, that moment when, you know, as, as the predator, you know, that's the prey. Because the fact that he was trying to hide it, if he just had it right out there in the open and just looked at me, who knows, but he tried to hide it. And so without even working out a plan with this Indian, it's like he was just in sync with me exactly. Jesus. So I walked... I made sure I walked out of the sun on this guy. So the sun's up behind me. I walked out of the sun and I said to him, you know, you owe a carton on that joint. My, my bro here uh, sold you. And the Indian instantly nods, right? And the guy, and the Indian makes a move this way. The guy looks towards him and I reach over and grab the carton out, out from under his jacket. He jumps up, I throw the cart into the Indian, I looked at the guy, and I said, get down or give up. He gave up. And he gave up. Now, it was unfair because most of the guys were on reception. Now, that was the reception center. What that meant was that a lot of people went there who were, they'd been sentenced the sentence was dependent on their diagnostic report from the prison. And so the sentence might change if they got a good report or go bad if they got a worse report. Now, it could be that this guy, um, uh, you know, was worried about his, how things would look if he got in a brawl in the yard. But the critical, the critical moment was, you know, get down or give up. And he gave it up. And so I walked back with the Indian and I went with the carton and we broke it open, handed around the cigarettes. And Doug looks at me and he says, what about you? I said, I don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of a, of a story too. Tony told me then were on the rec yard. This was like back in the seventies or eighties. ABs are all strong. And they took, um, I don't know if it was the jeans and trainers of someone on the rec yard and he just gave them up. And to Tony said from that moment on, because everybody saw that from that moment on, that guy's reputation was just ruined. Yeah, he was done. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. this guy actually that I took the cigarettes from, he wasn't as heartless as it, as it seemed because about an hour later, I was on the weight pit doing bench presses and I glanced over and he was on the edge of the weight pit pretending not to look at me. Now, that's another tell. If you're pretending not to look at me, then I know you've got evil in your heart. And somehow I just knew that. So it was the same Iron Mike. 
He was my spotter. I said, Aaron Mike, I said, there's this fella, see him over there? You said on the edge of the pit? I said, when he starts walking towards me, just give me the just give me the nod. And of course, the kid wasn't as gutless. And he was waiting for me to do a bench press and then he'd catch me and do me up good. You know, all he has to do is just lift the weight and throw it on my neck and I'm done. So just as he commits to his move, he's halfway across the pit. I stand up and walk over to him. And I said, I'm having bad thoughts about you. Don't ever think about that again. And he just looks at me, turns around and walks. <laughs> so it's a fine line, isn't it? Because like you said, if you do get in a situation, you're going to extend your sentence, but you, you've got to stand up for yourself or you're going to get punked. So how do you know where to balance well, that? Well, this is, this is the thing. This is what's so difficult about it because you have to play it right on that edge where they believe that you're going to go. They believe what you say, but you really don't want to be in slashing people to death with knives because if you don't get caught with the blood on you, you're going to be given up for sure by the other prisoners because there's just, you know, they can take that story to the security lieutenant and get a transfer to minimum security, or they might even get a few years off with the parole board. And there's always someone who'll, who'll jump at the chance. So the downside is so great that you sort of, it, it's a difficult little line you have to play, but you try to be right on that line. Did you ever see that video um, about these two Bushmen? And they had, this, they had this scam where they would rob lions of their food. Robbed lions. Yes. No. Well, this is amazing video. It's on YouTube. <laughs> These two guys, and they're middle-aged. One of them is like an old guy. He's like <laughs> maybe 55 or something, right? And the other one is about 30 something, 38. And they're just, and they've got these little toy, the Bushmen use these little toy bows about this big. I mean, they've got some little poison tip to them, but that's not going to, you know, kill the lion before he tears you to bits, right? So... These guys saw, they just watched the birds and they see where the lion had made a kill. And so they just stand up and walk straight for the pride. And there are about eight lions at the kill and just walk straight for them. Like they haven't got a fear in the world. Holy shit. And the lions, each lion just backs away suddenly like, what the fuck, what's going on here, right? And the lions back up and they got a window of about 30 seconds. The guys just walk to the, to the kill, take their knife, cut off a leg, throw it on the leg and walk. And in that 30 seconds, the lions are kind of looking to see what's going on. Are there any more of these humans? What, what's happening? Um, they're starting to start growling. And in those 30 seconds, they got this window to do their thing and escape. And then the lions get their courage back and they all come rushing in and they see the meat still there. And so they just attacked what's left, which is most of it. And these guys walked away with a whole haunch of a big antelope. And they were unarmed, essentially. Unarmed. And I gotta see any, this. any one of us would look like Arnold Schwarzenegger compared to these little skinny Bushmen. Wow. Now you understand, watching that, how human beings, being as weak and soft as we are, why we took over the planet and they didn't. It, it really is. You, get, you should watch that one. If you Do you know it. what the video title is? It'll be Bushmen robbing lions or something like Bushmen that. Bushmen robbing lions. <laughs> People are going to be all over that. So you've got some questions come in then. And um, there was a video I put up a couple of days ago. I think it was California Prison Shank Story, something like that. One of the clips from your podcast, One. And someone's asked, why was the Chicano kid rolled up after doing his expected duty? Do you remember that story? Is that yeah, too? But I'm, well, he's, he's just stabbed a guy in the back right in front of the guards. Why is he rolled up? Of course he's rolled up. I mean, he's committed an offense right in front of five prison guards. So he's going to get done. Yeah. So he got rolled up for sure. Okay. I mean, he's a, I, I felt for that guy because he, he basically got pushed into that by the Mexican, uh, by the uh, Chicano uh, gang. And he was, he only had short time to do. He was like mm -hmm. walking within a year or something, right? Kamikaze mission. But 
it's that rule, you know, the Chicanos really take that stuff seriously, more than the blacks do and more than the whites do. And there was no wiggle room for him. If he didn't do it, then he wasn't, he was a punk. And who knows where it would have gone from there. So personally, he could have finessed it, I think, but he didn't. Putting the knife right through the guy is the wrong move. All he had to do was attack him, you know, whack him in the head with a tray or something. Then he goes and does 30 days in the, in the lockup. And, you know, he's got his respect. He did something. But to put, the, put a knife right through a guy right in front of the guards, another seven years, whatever. If you want to learn more about the Chicano gang rules in California, see our video that went up recently with the rapper Mr. Capone. Um, he really lays it down what the politics are in California prison with the gang members and all the different gang structures.